we can have a happy Friday. Bear with me, folks. It takes a minute or two for YouTube to uh, convert. All right. Let me just post this link and we'll be on our way. Got to get the folks in here. And now let me switch my screen so that you guys can see me, my screen instead of me. There we go. Awesome. Duzzy. Good morning, Timothy, Cam, Kirk, Infinitely, Robert. Good morning, good morning, and good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing on this Friday? Angie, good morning. Jim, good morning. Henry, good morning. Dave, good morning. So happy to see everybody. Just so you guys know, there's about a 10-second delay, 8 or 10-second delay on... Uh, on uh, YouTube. So everything I say and do, there is a little bit of a delay. Ivano, Robert, Carrie, Richard. Can't believe it's Friday. I really, I worked a lot this week, had a lot of trades. It's time to relax. I get really tired by Fridays. Rochelle, I hope you're feeling better. Thank you. Thank you, Angie. Uh, we'll be starting in just a minute. I have a rule. I usually get a hundred people in before I start. It should be maybe another 30 seconds or so. JB, infinitely. Penny, how are you? <laughs> oh, that kid is sure as hell not getting that bike. We'll talk about it. We'll be starting in about 20 seconds. And we, we do have a big report coming out in about, uh, in about uh, 28 minutes, and I'll probably be here live with you guys talking about it. So it'll be interesting. And as I said, we'll be, we'll be starting in just a minute. Brian, good morning. Frank, good morning. All right, we have 111 people. I think it's a good time to start. Scott, Dr. Serena, hello there. Happy Friday to everybody. Happy Friday. Oh, I wish we would I wish the market would be closed sometimes on Fridays, especially on days like this. Uh, any soup despite no bike? <laughs> we'll find out. We'll find out soon enough. But uh, it's time to start. Um, I could tell that you guys could see my screen. War Dog is in the room. Good morning, War Dog. Let me just post something here. Next week, I am going to be showing you guys a very, very simple two-step process uh, to trade most consistent setup that I know of in the market. And I'm going to show everyone step-by-step -step how to do it uh, at 1 p.m. on Monday. It's got an 80% win rate. It's been proven for over a year and you guys are going to love it. And you can incorporate it into almost all of your, you can incorporate what I'm going to show you on Monday almost into anything you guys do. So it's going to be a lot of fun. It's brand new. It's not trading pit. It's going to be brand new. It's going to be really, really cool. It's the first time I'm doing this in a long, long time. Don't miss out. Sign up for Monday, uh, the two-step process to trade consistent setups. All right. Now let's get into all of this good stuff. And by the way, we broke our record yesterday. We had 317 people in the room, and I am very appreciative of that. All right. As you guys could see here, the NASDAQ is bouncing really hard this morning. The Dow Jones is not really bouncing too hard, but the Dow didn't get hit nearly as hard as the QQQs did yesterday. Um, what's going on? What caused this yesterday? Typically, when you guys want to, <clears throat> typically, the rule of thumb is this. If you want to find the catalyst for a move, and I want you guys to remember what I'm going to say something. This is important, really important. If you want to know what the catalyst for the move is, watch and see what the first thing to move was, okay? So yesterday when we were looking at the market and <clears throat> we were looking at the, let me just go here real quick. Let me just go to TLT. I'll show you what I'm talking about. And this is something you guys should pay attention to. It's important. That's right. Big report today at 8.30, and I think it's going to be a good one. We'll see what happens. But notice yesterday, what did the bond market do yesterday? The bond market rallied. It, it closed higher yesterday. Also, number one, I want you guys to think about this for a second, okay? What did the bond market do yesterday? It went up. That's lower yield, okay? So anybody who's telling you that the Fed caused this to happen yesterday, 
is not being accurate with you. Let me prove it to you. The downside rally, first of all, everything the Fed's, and we'll go over all of this today, but first of all, everything this, everything that the Fed said, everything that the Fed said uh, was already known. There was nothing that the Fed said yesterday that the market didn't already know. If, I, if I've been talking about the stupid kid in the bike for two months, trust me, the market knew about it. Moreover, the bond market closed higher yesterday, not lower. Higher bonds, lower yield. So in all of that talk yesterday, the bond market didn't do it. It had nothing to do with the bond market. The bond market might have been an excuse for it, but the bond market didn't cause this yesterday. So what caused this yesterday? Crude oil. When the news came out yesterday, crude oil rallied like a beast, like a beast yesterday, like a beast, okay? So the biggest catalyst for what happened yesterday was not the market, it was crude oil, all right? It was crude oil, it was the energy market. It was the fact, it was the fact that uh, we got some negative news from the Middle East. So the, the majority, the brunt of this was not interest rate related because interest rates didn't go down yesterday. I mean, interest rates didn't go up yesterday, they went down. So in my opinion, in my opinion, the majority of what happened yesterday was caused by the Middle East, not by the bond market, okay? Look at this, look at that, see that? And then what happened after the news came out? Nothing. So if you guys ever wanna know what really caused something, Go back and watch and see what moved in response. And if you look at the bond market yesterday, intraday, and this is intraday bond market yesterday, you will see that the bond market went up, 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 not down towards the end of the day. Here, didn't do anything, went higher, didn't, didn't break down. So, so in my opinion, and based on what I'm seeing, I don't think it was the Fed. I think it was international, tr I think it was international, uh, the unforeseeable things that happened in the Middle East. And I also think it may have something to do with the fact that there's a lot more talk about uh, Ukraine joining NATO, which, which in this case would put us closer to World War III. Because if Ukraine joins NATO, this becomes a World War III. So I think it had to do with that, and I think it had to do with Middle East. Yeah, yeah, Adam, it wasn't. Uh, it, it, so I don't think um, I don't really think it was that. I think it was maybe a combination of things, but mostly it was it was it was energy driven. It wasn't bond market driven. If it was bond market driven, the bond market wouldn't have closed up here yesterday. The bond market would have closed down here yesterday. All right. So, so again, just just wanted to kind of explain to you what's going on right now. But with that said, as you could see here, the bond market is now back in this range. And as I said to you earlier, I think it's going to kind of stay in this range for a while. Uh, yeah. So, you know, Israel meeting. Yeah, exactly. That's right, Jack. That's exactly right. Israel. I think a lot of it has to do with Israel. A lot of this has to do with with Israel. But with that said, the market's bouncing off pretty well today. Gold market, I'm expecting gold to be elevated, but is gold really up a lot today? Look at gold today, it's flat. What about what about um, oil? Let's look at oil. What's oil doing right now? It's flat. It's 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 flat. It's not. It it didn't break out the high. It didn't do anything. It's flat. And what are futures doing right now? They're up, they're up, and they've been up all overnight. So, to me, I'm not seeing uh, I'm not seeing a major follow through unless the uh, the major catalyst, which we see today, which is going to be the employment report, is going to be completely off, and I don't think it's going to be off. But remember, it's a it's a we 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 honestly don't know. But as far as the Fed speakers talking, I don't think they're going to have a major impact because that kid is very dense. Now, uh, let's go through volatility. One of the things you want to keep an eye on today is volatility. Volatility did break out yesterday. I thought it peaked out here, but it did break out yesterday. If volatility starts breaking the high, we got something to worry about. And I think if it happens, it's going to happen before the opening bell because the report comes out an hour before the opening bell. But, but 
If it doesn't, if it just starts coming down, then I think the party, the the downside party is over. And as we all know, the market has a tendency to overreact in the short term. So I'm not as worried about this because volatility is not really doing anything today. I mean, look at the last few hours, just kind of sitting there. It's not going higher. Hasn't gone higher since last night. This is the peak. It hasn't broken that peak yet. Um, GLD, the, the, the stock closed down yesterday and it's up just a little bit today. So I'm not really, um, I, I think it, whatever happened yesterday was not a momentum driven rally that would likely continue unless there's some major fire that we need to deal with today. Um, let's look at levels. First of all, as far as employment data, let me just show you the parts that are important. The hourly earnings, the year over year hourly earnings are important and the unemployment rate is very important. And I'll be taking this report apart in the VIP room today, which is going to be at 11 o'clock, not at noon. So remember, VIP room, today's Friday. And uh, <laughs> that's right, infinitely. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's Friday. So Friday, we do it, we do it at, uh, at, at 11 a.m. So it'll be nice and early for you guys so you could see exactly what's going on. Uh, in terms of the broad market, let's just kind of go through this and then I'll go into levels. We got non-farm payroll today. That's going to gauge timing of interest rate cuts. The little kid's going to have a chance to scream out again today. Uh, la Labor Department reported employment report. I hardly ever even go through this because it's just, look at this. Tw it go it's been going between 200,000 and 220,000. And even if it goes to 250,000, nothing's going to happen. I mean, hardly anybody even talks about this anymore. Employment has been very, very steady. We had trade deficit. It was wider. Um, obviously, it's not as, as meaningful because the trade deficit has been getting wider now for a long time. I mean, 66 billion versus 68 billion, it's just not that much of a difference. Now, here's where things get interesting. And remember something, the market didn't move all that much. And and here's, the, here's why I'm telling you that it wasn't the bond market that did this. You know why? Because I'm going to read this to you. But after I'm going to read this to you, I'm going to point you to this. We went from 62% to 60%. If the Fed, if the bond market reacted, A, the bond market would be a lot lower. B, this would be at 40%. So the kid, the kid sent the kid went from 65 or 62% to 60% yesterday. Do you think that would cause the market to, to, to go off like this? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So I think he's hearing it, but he doesn't want to accept it just yet. That kid is dense. And again, every time I talk about the kid, I'm talking about institutional investors because institutional investors are the market, but uh, they're just not listening to what the Fed is saying. A labor department, so, so here, uh, Goolsby said yesterday, the higher than anticipated inflation figures observed at the beginning of the year probably do not alter the overall picture of cooling group price growth. My overall assessment is that two months should not knock us off on the path back to target. Okay, fair enough. But he's not saying it's happening tomorrow. He's not giving us a timeline. He's just saying that I don't think the timeline, I don't think the beginning of the year should, should should throw us off, but it already did throw us off. That's what he's forgetting to tell you. It did throw us off. Remember March, interest rates, 80%, 75%. Did we get an interest rate reduction in March? So it did, it did. So what he's saying isn't really true because we've already moved the timeline. Remember, we were at like 100% at in June for, uh, for uh, so so what he's saying is just total, that's what I'm saying. These folks just say things and they think people don't like pay attention because I, I read everything they say every single time. And I have a memory of an elephant when it comes to this stuff. Uh, Barkin says, it's smart for the central bank to take its time to gain more clarity. Hey, we have to get more clarity on our bank account, mom and dad. We don't know if we're ready to, to buy that bike. Um, the first two months didn't change anything, but you ain't getting that bike in March like we planned. You see what I'm saying? They're just full of it. They're just full of it. Um, smart for central banks to take its time to gain more clarity regarding the trajectory before reducing rates. Do you, are you seeing a timeline anymore? Do you guys see them talking three cuts, four cuts? Do you see that? Have you guys see that anywhere in what I just read to you? Because I haven't. Remember, we used to hear it. We're going to do three by these same guys. I should I should quote what they say and and show you a timeline of what they say at every at every time and you could see how it just changes 
how they get how they be, they're becoming more broader and not specific how remember beginning of the year we're going to cut rates three four times we're making significant progress um i think it's time to gain more clarity oh you want to gain more clarity huh okay and uh, this guy's saying that it doesn't uh, uh uh change the trajectory but meanwhile the timing has been completely already changed now people are talking about one versus four uh Oh, what happens in the pit is even better, Carlos. Um, Hoeing is on the free a free interview on the thoughtful YouTube. Money uh, worth an hour of your time. He has a Kansas Fed. No, I'll I'll check it out. Thank you, Adam. I'll check it out later. Matt and I have a TV in our office, so we can uh, hang out on Fridays and watch. We hang out on Fridays and watch the Fed speakers. You know, like most people hang out on Fridays, watch movies. We watch Fed speakers. Look at Harker. Inflation remains too high. We're not where we need to be. I, I, I mean, okay. I mean, please tell me, are you guys reading four rate hikes this year? We're ready to get going. It's happening right now. Uh, any any minute now, are you guys getting any of that? Because I, 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 I'm not getting that. Okay, Kashkari, interest rate cuts might not be necessary if progress on inflation stalls, particularly if the economy continues to demonstrate strength. Yeah, I mean, I mean, l let me ask you guys. Does it sound like like Powell after reading this? Doesn't it sound like Powell is pissing on our leg a little bit more and more every time as the year progressed? I don't want to say I've been right 100%. That's that's besides the point. But doesn't it sound like it? So one guy's like, "Okay, so let's just let's just make sure we're on the same page here, all right?" Um Higher than anticipating inflation at the beginning of the year. Um, smart to give them more time. Uh, inflation remains too high. <laughs> Rate cuts might not be necessary. Uh, I mean, uh, right? So, so don't listen to anything I say. I, I'm just, I, I've been, by the way, by the way, now I'm going to pat myself. How long have I been telling you this for? How many months have I been telling you this for? All right, let's move on. But but the kid is dense. You look, if someone told me this, I'd be in the what would be what do you think I would put my odds of getting that damn bike? 30%, 40%? Exactly infinitely, right? But look at this. Look how, look, folks, it was at 62 or 64. Do you remember what it was yesterday? I don't want to go back to the video. It was, I think, 62%. After all of this, it's at 60%? That kid is still dense. So uh, meanwhile, tension rose in the Middle East after Israel heightened preparation for possible retaliation. This is what caused the market yesterday, guys. This is what caused the market. Hey, I did a survey in the VIP room and a very large portion of you guys thought two months ago that there was a very high chance that rates were gonna go down in March. Now I'm going to ask you guys, do you think there's a high rate that interest rates are going to go down in June or July? I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you got to go out and buy, get a job to buy a bike. Exactly. Exactly. So again, I'm just, you know, it's right there. I haven't seen anything positive here. Okay. So anyway, anyway I don't want to belate the point. You get the point. I think you're all getting the point now. You got the Walmart ones. Um, yeah, right. Yeah, politically, me and Tebow's were talking about it yesterday. I mean, Powell knows that Trump is going to fire him, so he may do anything he needs to do to keep his job. <laughs> all right, Europe is down. They're following U.S. I'm not really too worried about it because this is just all based on U.S. Uh, track the broader market, retreat as hawkish remarks from some Fed officials, height, heighten Middle East tension. And, and remember, Europe is a lot closer to Middle East than we are dampened market sentiment. And honestly, folks, I think it's this right here. If you were to ask me, I would say 80% this and 20% Fed yesterday, okay? Travel, retail stocks underperformed on Friday while energy stocks advanced. That makes perfect sense. Let me change this color that automatically changes without me asking for it. Japan closed sharply lower, tracking Wall Street's losses overnight. Hawkish signals from the Fed, geopolitical tension, brokerage and chip stocks led the decline. We all we already know that. But what's really bad is th their household spending declined for the 12th consecutive month. 
and they're still debating. I got to say, these Japanese folks are pretty dense. They're stubborn. That's what it is. And um, I have a feeling China was closed because I'm not seeing, yeah, closed for the yeah tomb sweeping holiday. So we're not going to get anything good or bad from China. By the way, that helps us out quite a bit. That helps us out quite a bit. Okay, um, let's talk levels. Let's talk levels and then I'll talk sentiment. Um, and by the way, hopefully my levels that I've been drawing for you, my crayon drawings have been uh, helpful. Remember, I don't change the lines. I just, I just, um, yeah, you get your brother's or your sister's old bike, right? Okay, so um, I send you this when we broke this and, and, I, and I, I made a comment. I said, hey, remember what I always say, once we enter a level, we tend to traverse that level. So we're now at this level. The question is, are we gonna come back up or come down? Be very careful because here's one of, I'm going to say something important. I talk a lot. I'm going to say something very important right now. So listen to me very carefully. There's a very high chance. There's a very high chance that we're going to come up this morning and the market's going to look really beautiful. I'm not, I don't know if this is going to happen. I'm just saying here's a very likely scenario. There's a very good chance we're going to come right back up in this area around the 517, test this area. And then the Fed speakers are going to start talking again. And then we may start coming back down or breaking hard through this. Now, obviously, what I'd like to see is I'd like to see us break through this area and come back to this level. That level is between 517 and a half and about 521-ish. And again, you know, these are not down to the tick. I, I draw them. I don't have like a, a leveler, okay? So, you know, these are just me drawing levels for you based on these levels, based on these pivots right here. So you could see this is one month of trading level. Now, notice something interesting. This area has is very congested. There's a lot of area here. So we could, we could theoretically just stick around this level for a while and consolidate, but that's not what usually happens. And I'll talk about uh, strangling the market and what that was all about. So, so um, there's a good chance we're, here are the three scenarios. I don't think we're gonna break this level today. I don't, I don't think there's enough of a catalyst. And I think if it was going to happen, it would happen in the morning after a bearish report. If the report is not bearish, I don't think the Fed is going to sink this market unless there's more turmoil from the Middle East, which is completely, un, you know, a few things are unforeseeable. Global events, weather events, uh, things like that are unforeseeable. They're not within the market's grasp. So when they happen, the market has to ac uh, accommodate for it very, very quickly which is what happened yesterday, when you get something that's totally not priced in. And more importantly, you don't know if it's meaningful or not. So, um, and I'm hoping that that this helps you guys and gives you guys some clarity. But my what I don't want to happen to you guys, I don't want you to get suckered in this morning. I don't want you to see the market going up and saying, ooh, I'm going to go and buy all those stocks yesterday and, I, and they're all going to go up. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't be foolish. Noticed I wasn't buying anything in the end of the day yesterday. I was doing strangles, stra strangles, and I'll talk about strangles in a minute. Um, so watch these levels. I'll keep you updated every step of the way in the VIP room and in the pit. Obviously, the pit a little more detailed, but uh, this is the level you want to watch. So three scenarios, chop, chop around these levels, especially with China being closed, Um a little test of this area in the morning and then a breakthrough higher, which is what I'd like to see, or a test higher and a and a pullback back to the downside. Kind of like this, look. We tested the level, look what, what here. We gap, we closed here, we gapped up and boom, came down all the way. So yes, we have beginning of earnings. So again, I'm, I'm bullish on the market. I don't think yes, I don't think yesterday's move was meaningful. In terms of it was it was not random, but I don't think it, it meant anything in the big scheme of things. So as long as we stay in this area, and remember another thing, the longer we don't go down anymore, the be the higher the odds we're going to snap back up. So it's not always about, hey, we're just sitting here not doing anything. That's okay. If we just sit here and not do anything and stop going down, that means buyers are going to eventually start coming in. They're going to get greed is going to, right now fear is driving the market, but greed is going to come in. So I, t I gave you three scenarios. Now, I don't think we're just going to sit here because we have the employment report coming out. So I think we're either going to cool off more or come up here. But I think we're going to go into the, visit this level today or stay into this in this level. I don't think we're going to break this level lower. 
I think if that was going to happen, we would have seen it overnight. Okay. Um, QQQ. Let's look at our levels. We're again, we're in this zone right here. And the question is, are we going to break the 440 level or are we going to test the 433 level? And are we going to lay? And I'll, I'll I'll keep you updated. My suggestion is to take a screenshot of this so you kind of know where we are, what level we're in. Are we in the upper level? Are we in the middle level? Are we in the doghouse? Because look at the consolidation here. It could last quite some time. So again, same thing with the NASDAQ. We're either going to hang out here or we're going to come back up here or we're going to test this level, pretend we're going up, sucker a bunch of poor retail traders, and then take us down. By the way, that's what T-Buzz, I, I was talking to T-Buzz. T-Bus thinks we're gonna we're gonna open higher, go higher, and then break down again. And T-Bus has been doing this for forty years. You know, we, we don't analyze the markets the same way, but you know, pretty similarly. Um, but he doesn't use technicals; he uses price levels. I use technicals. So uh, let's look at the Dow real quick. So I don't think this is predominantly caused by the Fed. I think this is predominantly caused by. Um, I think this is predominantly caused by. Uh, Middle East. So look, look at how good my lines work. Let me just go here. I think right there. See that? Not bad, right? So we're now again on the Dow, we're above. Notice the right now the Dow lost one point thirty four percent. The Dow is up already point two four percent. And again, we'll we'll see how it reacts in the employment report. But the Dow went from being very very strong to being the weakest one, partly because of the healthcare stuff and partly because. You know, when you have a global economy turmoil versus just energy stocks, it tends to involve blue chips quite a bit, okay? So um, again, the level on the Dow is 39,000. The lower level on the Dow is right where we're at right now, 38,600. And uh, we're either going to go above 39,000 or we're going to break 38,600. One or two is, is where we are. Sentiment, 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 sentiment. Remember yesterday I said there's a lot of really good shorts popping up. My short list was longer than my long list. So let me show you guys something. 90-day breakouts, 60. 90-day breakouts, 74. Remember, and I always tell you, this is really good for the market. This creates elasticity. This creates rhythm, okay? So this is really good for the market. This is really really, really good for the market. It means we now have um, the ability for longs to start going up without doing this. And uh, I'd love to take advantage of it and I will take advantage of it, but I want to see some buying. Um, I'm going to be late to the party. I'm not going to be aggressively doing anything this morning because the way I'm looking at it, we got plenty of time if the market's going to recoup what it lost. Um, as far as sectors, sectors are still out of whack. They haven't been compressed well enough yet. Usually it happens, which you need to, you need to have like five or six good slow down days, not a run down day. That's not going to do it. That just creates more panic. So look at this. This is all over the place. Energy, communication services, uh, ET, Bitcoin, utilities. So if you take Bitcoin and, and if you take communication and Bitcoin out of here, you'll have it, but you can't. I mean, they're here. But then you have you have blue, 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 blue chip, S&P 500, which is fine. Then you have QQQ, technology, semiconductors, mid caps, but then you got consumer staples. What in the world is consumer, hey, we just broke our level. We got 327 people in here. Look at that. Every day we're breaking the number of people coming in here. That's fantastic. Thank you, Dr. Serena. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for bringing it up. I totally forgot about it. So again, uh, Tech, this is this is good. This is good. This is good. This is good. But what the hell is consumer staples doing here? Mm -mm. This is good. What? Why is the Dow here? Dow should be up here with the blue chips. Uh, real estate builders, home builders. Okay, I get it. Consumer discretionary healthcare. Why is healthcare down here, not up here? So it, they're still not in whack. They're still not in whack with each other, and that's a that's a big big problem. So the market would need to cool off or consolidate. You know, going up fast or down like that, it doesn't do any good. Nice consolidation, some a few days of, of consolidating. And by the way, by the way, a lot of times, I just want to show you a daily chart. 
A lot of times investors think after a move like this, the market will either go down or bounce back hard. Sometimes it just kind of sits in here. Now, but not always. So I want to teach you guys something before I move on to the top stocks and bottom stocks, okay? You guys might have noticed yesterday in the um, in the pit and in the free channel, I didn't do this for money-making purposes. I did this to teach you something very, very meaningful. So, so look at this. What is a... What, okay, so I want to teach you guys something important. No problem, Richard. We try to do a good job. So what is a strangle? And when do you take advantage of a strangle? Um, you guys maybe will will keep me posted of how we did, of how the numbers are looking. It's going to come out in a, in a minute. Here, let's just look at the futures real quick here. And don't get too, you know, remember the market doesn't open for another hour. We'll see how this reacts. You guys can, uh, strong, right? Yeah, I figured they would be strong. It'll be very interesting to see what happens. Let's just revisit this in a few minutes, but I want to show you, I want to teach you guys something that can help you make money consistently, okay? So watch this, okay? When you see a move like this in the S&P or the Dow or any index, when you see a big move like this in the major market index, the first thing you should be thinking to yourself is, how do I strangle this market, okay? So yesterday, I didn't want to give you the, the, the real juicy stuff, so I gave you this, the almost juicy stuff. So this is the free Telegram channel. And look at what I said. I said markets are volatile right now. You know what usually happens after like the, the, a bar like this? The market usually continues going down or erases everything and comes back up. Either way, you have a lot of movement. What do, you, what do you use to make money during movement? You, you, you go long strangles. What are strangles? Strangles is when you buy a call, you buy a put that has the same expiration, but a different strike price. So yesterday I told you guys, let me just go right here to one month. Let me go back to my Telegram channel. There's a lesson here. You could take advantage of it. So if you were to go and look at an option book, the options books would tell you that strangles are used when markets are very volatile because when markets are volatile, they're going to stay more volatile. So yesterday, I told you to buy the 442 call, right? And I told you to buy the 436 put. Now, when I said this, the market was right here. It was about th it was right here, like around... 439. It, it was before this major drop yesterday. It was like right here. Uh, it was at 318 and about an hour before the closing bell. Uh, each one of these is an hour. So it was it was around here. So why did I do that? And I told you to go out about four or five days. That Why would you do that? Well, we're betting on the fact that the market is going to go up a lot or down a lot. So all you need for today for this trade to work out is a big move one way or the other. And what did I do in the pit? In the pit, I did the same thing, but I did it a little more crafty. I did it with a spot because that's a premium service. What did I do? I want to show you guys this. It's too late now. You can't get into this trade now. But I want to show you guys this because you can learn from this. Professional traders take advantage of the market we don't inflict our strategies on the markets. We do what the market is telling us to do. If the market's flat, we straddle the market. When the market's volatile, we strangle the market. What I did yesterday was a textbook trade. I strangled the market while the market was very volatile. So what did I say yesterday? I said to go long 516 right here, call, and 511 put right here, See how we're in the middle and I said to go long 516 and 511? So if we break out up here or if we break down right here, this option will be worth something. And we didn't really need to go out five days. You could have gone down three days or four days. I think we went out five days. But I wanted to give you this. So if the market rallies today, that strangle be, will be worth the money. It's called, it's called, it's not hedging. You're not hedging anything. It's you're just you're just buying a call 
a little out of the money and you're buying a put a little out of the money and you're looking for the market to move. So, and you want to be a little bit, you want to be in the middle. So if let's say the market's at 20, you want to sell, you want to buy the 23 and you want to buy the 17. So I want to show you guys this. Do you typically place a strangle at the end of the day? No, Patrick, you place the strangle when the market is moving. So, and when do you do a strangle? How often do I recommend strangles? Hardly ever. But when the market does this, you should anticipate that the market's going to stay volatile for quite some time. And when the market stays volatile for quite some time, you want to strangle it. Do you see how I give you the right strategy for what the market is doing? Sometimes, sometimes Wayne. The problem, Wayne, is earnings price in the upside and the downside. The S&P yesterday didn't price in squat. It was sudden. It was instant. So it's a little different. We didn't have to pay that extra implied volatility premium. So hopefully by the end of today, today, you guys can take off that strangle if you put that strangle on. So I wanted to give you guys a little bonus and explain to you how strangles work. So strangles work great on days like this, on days like this. When you have a big move, you should anticipate the move to continue, but you don't know which way it'll go, so you strangle the market. You do it really cheap because the, the move is supposed to happen imminently, next few days. So if you bought a strangle that expires at the end of today, end of today and paid like three, four dollars for it, and if the market moves, that strangle can double. The exit plan for Chris is for one of those options to gain two, 300% and one of the options to become worthless. That's the plan. So let's say you buy a call for $3 and you buy a put for $3, you spend $6. When that strangle becomes worth $10, you liquidate it. You made $4, okay? So right now, the market's moving up. So we're anticipating that the market's going to reverse, gain all this back. The, the, op, the put option will re expire worthless and the call option will double or triple in price. As long as the call option gains more than we paid for the put, you make money on the trade. Sorry, I wanted to explain this to you, but I wanted you guys to understand how professional traders really trade. We trade what's in front of us. There's an option strategy to take advantage of every type of market cycle. 348 people in the room. Wow, 351, I'm taking a screenshot of this. This is fantastic. That's great, look at that. And I was able to teach you guys what a strangle is. And that makes me very happy. All right, 351. Love it, love it, love it, love it. We just point it here. One second, one second. Let me just do something here. Oops, sorry about that. Okay. All right. Oh, where are you guys? One second. Let me, I lost the YouTube channel. One second. I'll be back in 10 seconds. One second here. There we go. Okay. I got you back. All right. I got you guys back. All right. So now, now that we did this, let's now, I apologize for that. Let's now, uh, let me see how the employment report did. And then I'll give you the stocks. Oh yeah. 303. That's very strong. Unemployment rate didn't go really at all. Th these are good numbers. These are good numbers. These are good numbers. These are really good numbers. There's nothing wrong with these numbers. Let's see what the market's doing right now. It's starting to rally. Okay. Well, the market's going to give us a little bit of support. A little bit of support. All right. So let's talk about stocks that I'm liking. I'll give you the long side and the short side. Beautiful stock, General Dynamics. Let me just change my template so we could look at all my accoutrements here. Okay, here we go. All right. General dynamic looks good.
Beacon Roofing looks good. Not a lot of global exposure there. GoDaddy still looks good. Really good, actually. Told you about this stock yesterday. It's still not that far from the 8-day EMA. Uh, Exxon. And and folks, don't go buying twenty. Uh, don't go buying twenty energy stocks. They they they're extremely correlated to each other, just like chip stocks are. Look at this RTX. Remember, we took a trade in RTX in the pit. Just kept going, and that's why I say I always pick trades. We did it like right here. I always pick trades based on swing trades, not on day trades. Never ever day trade based on a day trade because you have nothing to lean on if it doesn't do good. Spotify is still looking good. Murphy Oil, again, remember what I just said about um, Exxon. They're very correlated. And the fact that energies are not up today is bullish for the market. We're going to check volatility in a second. Play. Still bullish. Still, still bullish. Let's just quickly check volatility. Starting to cool off a little bit. And let's look at SPY. It was up to 0.28 or 0.23. Now it's up a little more. So it's just kind of sitting there. It's not good that this report didn't cost too much upside, but at least we're in this range, which is really, really good. We'll see how the day unfolds today, but this is good news. This is very good news for the market. All right, let's continue now to the short side. The short side's pretty fruitful. Be careful with the short side today. Let the short side prove itself. You can always buy these stocks when they're a little bit higher, not lower. So it's, you know, like today possibly. Uh, pizza. Papa John's. Credit company. Equinix. Right below the 200-day moving average. Lamb Weston. I always confuse this company with a uh, with a, met, a healthcare, and it's not. It's not a healthcare at all. Be careful here; it may start pulling back up. Snow. This one looks great. Look at that nice down, slow down slide. Nothing crazy. Starbucks have been talking about the stock for a few days now. Um. Unity software, definitely focus on software companies. You want to see if tech is, if you see a tech company that's really breaking down right now, that's pretty meaningful. Um, Dropbox, look at this nasty, nasty, nasty sell off. Uh, Roku, been talking about this stock for a while now. Remember this little one? We took money on this one too. They keep going our way. And last but not least, Med. Wow, 362 people in the room. I'm telling you, we're going to get up to 1,000. Remember, we were at 250, 300, 350. 10, now with 362. Folks, I'm hosting a very special event at 1 p.m. Eastern time on Monday. You're all invited. It's new stuff. I'll show you the exact, exact, literally exact two-step process. Everyone can use to target most consistent trade setup that has an 80% swing trading accuracy in real time over the last year. Two steps. One of the biggest mistakes retail traders make is not using this Simple, simple strategy. And you can use this strategy and you can apply it to any of your strategies. It's a, it's a seasonality strategy and it's really, really cool. Two steps. It's all based on my KISS principle, keep it, keep it simple, stupid principle. This strategy can be used on just about any charting platform, doesn't require fancy indicators, and you guys are going to love it. So RSVP, it's happening on Monday, Monday at noon. Um, Let's just check one last time the bond market. See how bonds are doing. Yeah, bonds are coming up. 
coming up. And futures, let's look at indices. Coming up. Coming up, not down. The news is not interpreted negatively. NVIDIA and VSLR are, look very good to the long side right now. And so does AMD, by the way. All right. So does AMD. All right. I had a fantastic time with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here and helping me break my, my world record on the number of viewers. We went to 367 people today. The goal is 1,000 before the end of the year, and I think we're going to get there. Have a fantastic day. If you guys need anything today, please email me, not customer service. Remember, Cam has customer service live from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Go hit the red link in your inbox and go from there. I hope you guys have a fantastic day, and I will see you later. And don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. If you see the spy, I'm telling you right now, be careful today. You don't always have to trade. You don't have to trade at any given time. If you see this, if you see this, this, this rally, watch this level right here and whether we're going to break cleanly through it or whether we're going to bounce down. That level is around 517.75. I'll see you guys later. Have a great day.